I went through a period not too long ago of going out on late night jogs. I used to go out running when it was dark, but then I ended up for one reason or another heading out later and later. I don't know why, but I really enjoyed the feeling of being out and about while everyone else was at home tucked up in bed. I felt proud of myself. I live in a rural area, so the street light was few and far between along the way. There were a few points where it was really dark, but I enjoyed it. I'm not sure if it gave me a rush or not, but I wasn't scared. I should probably say that I'm a guy, and I live in a very quiet and safe area. This happened when I was running through my area one night at around midnight. I had just turned off of the road which leads into a country lane. I liked that route because I got to run alongside an irrigation canal, and it was nice to hear the water flowing below and the croak and chirp of the wild that lived within it. The irrigation canal ran alongside a bunch of rice fields. It was an open field, which made me feel free to be out there at night. I was slowly jogging my usual route, and then I saw something that surprised me. I wasn't alone that night. I sensed a presence up ahead. By that I mean, I saw two vague shapes in the darkness. These two shapes seemed to be stood right beside the irrigation canal. As I drew a couple of meters closer, I was still about 12 meters away. I realized that those shapes in the dark belonged to humans. Even though it was dark, and there wasn't any streetlight, and I couldn't see the faces of those two humans by the canal, I knew instinctively that they were old people. Maybe it was due to the way they were stood or something. I thought that they were a couple. I thought that the pair of them must be out taking a late night walk. I had seen others do it, so it wasn't that uncommon. Thinking that it wasn't anything to worry about, I had no issue continuing my jog past them. I took a glancing look over at them, and I realized that they were doing something weird. I heard them talking as I approached. I had brought my pace down because I suddenly became curious as to what they were up to. I heard the old couple say, Oh, you're doing so well. Keep on trying. Come on. They seemed to be happily chatting with one another as they were looking into the canal. The odd thing was the fact that it was pitch black down there. I ran past that canal a bunch of times, even in summer, and I never saw the water on a night as dark as that night. I didn't know what they were doing, but I knew it was something unusual. It felt weird. So I sped up and I passed them. They must have heard me coming, but it didn't put them off whatever they were doing. And I heard them calling out into the darkness of the canal after I passed too. They seemed determined with their praise to whatever they were doing. I completed my jog that night and went home, showered and went to sleep. But just before sleeping, I wondered. And I wondered what they were looking at in the dark down there in the canal, and before I knew it, I must have drifted off to sleep. It played on my mind though over the next couple of days. I couldn't stop thinking about what two old people could have been up to that late, so I went back. I decided to head out on an early morning jog instead of a late night one, as usual. I wanted to check out the area I saw the old people in. I approached through the routes I usually took, and I slowed down at the bend. I saw that old couple. I went to the edge of the irrigation canal and I peered in, purely out of curiosity. I didn't expect to see what I saw, but there were six dolls in the canal, and all of their limbs had been removed. Those limbs were floating in the boggy water around them. Judging by how dirty those dolls looked, I imagine that they must have been in there for a long time. 
was that old couple talking to those dolls? For what reason and why? Was that old couple demented in some way? As you can imagine, I have a lot more questions than just those that you heard me ask myself then. But alas, I have no answers. I ended up changing my nightly jogging route just in case. It was a pretty creepy experience, even though it probably doesn't sound that creepy. This happened in the midst of a cold winter. I fell asleep early one night. Our family home was nice and warm because the heating was on. Everyone else in my family had gone upstairs to bed, but I stayed downstairs. It was so warm underneath the kotatsu. It was one of those nights where you never meant to fall asleep early, but you ended up doing it. Maybe you were more tired than you realized. The problem is when you fall asleep in a place other than your bed, you're bound to wake up during the night, and that's what happened to me. I think it was about 1am when I woke up. It was dark and I couldn't see the time well. Oh man, I've got to get up early in the morning, was my first thought. The usual thoughts of, oh, I need to drink some water, and I need to go to the bathroom, I need to brush my teeth and wash my face also came, but they weren't as important. Just as I was about to get myself to my feet, I heard a sound. It was like a cat's meow. What the hell? Was this some kind of nightmare? I didn't own a cat, but I was hearing one. I guess that it could have been some street cats making a racket, you know, doing their thing. Well, that's kind of what it sounded like to me. I decided to get up and go in search of the direction of the sound. It was coming from outside, but it sounded like it was coming from directly outside. I separated my curtains and looked out. Into the dark of night, I saw a large shadow out there. Even though it was entirely devoid of color, it looked humanoid. It was jet black. That shadow was looming over me. And if it wasn't for the glass door that separated us, it would almost be eye to eye with me. It wasn't a cat that was making that noise that I had heard. It was whatever that shadow was. It was either mimicking a cat cry, or it was the weirdest sounding moaning sound I'd ever heard. Fear didn't even come to mind at first. It was just the pure shock of, I don't know, maybe the best way to phrase it is the pure shock of, what? It continued to make that strange cat-like moan, you know the one where they sense a predator, or they feel as if they're in danger? That low moan. This towering shadow kept making that noise despite the fact that I had found it out there. The noise it made was so weird. It was just that steady cat moan. There was no inflection to it. It was just a horribly dull wailing sound that sounded vaguely cat-like. It was between a cat and someone moaning in pain. I backed away from the window and I turned off the lights. I wanted to see if it was just the imaginings of my tired mind or if there really was something out there. I knew the vantage point that anyone might have stood that close as the shadow was once all the lights were off in my house. I knew whoever was out there wouldn't be able to see me, especially with how dark it was. It was really hard to see inside my place. I watched that shadow stood there with a knife in my hand for 10 straight minutes and it didn't move once. It stood rooted to the spot, unwavering like a statue. So I had some time to think to myself about what I was seeing and if there was a person out there. There were a few things to consider. I wondered if it was a pervert and if it was someone who might have some learning issues who had wandered onto my property. 
This is all at the same time that I'm thinking, am I really seeing this or not? I didn't think it was either at the time, and I don't think it was that now. Whoever was out there wasn't trying to get in. It just kept making this vague, cat-like moaning sound. It just seemed to cry out for a reason unknown to me. And during those ten minutes that I was just staring at this thing, I was still trying to figure out if it was really there or not, if my eyes were deceiving me, as well as my ears. I remember just standing there by the back door in the kitchen, staring at this shadow, listening to its rhythmic moaning sound. It sounded just for a second, like the cat I had when I was younger. Before I knew it, I was getting drowsy again, and the sound that it was making was slowly becoming less annoying and more and more soothing. My thoughts seemed to slow down, and I can't remember much of what happened after that. I must have fallen asleep, but a few moments before I fell asleep, I remember fighting the urge to sleep, but I lost that battle I guess because I woke up later in the morning, back on the sofa. As soon as I was conscious, I looked towards the spot that I had seen the shadow, and there was nothing there. I got up and went to look outside, and it hadn't rained the night before but there were no footprints out there. I asked my family if they had experienced anything or heard anything in the night, but they say that they hadn't. I mean, if they did, I'm sure, I would have heard all about it. I remember nodding in agreement when my wife said that I must have just had a bad dream. I agreed at the time, but I didn't really agree, and I don't really agree. I don't think it was a dream. Something really came to our house that night. I just can't explain what it was. Anytime I hear a cat do that low, guttural, meow sound, I think back to that night. This happened about five years ago, in Kyoto, the former capital of Japan. I had an office job, and sometimes the hours weren't as flexible as I'd like them to be. Us workers would usually have to stay until the projects we owned were complete. I didn't mind doing it. I suppose it was just hard to have any constants in my life. Because I didn't have a pretty steady routine, I decided to do something about it. I made a commitment to myself. I would take a walk after work around this forest trail area close to my neighborhood, no matter what time I finished that day. Now, because on average I finished pretty late, and this forest trail was out in the sticks, I didn't usually run into any people along my walk. But that all changed one night, when I ended up encountering someone stood by the side of the forest trail. He was a man of medium build. He wore dark clothes. And the striking thing about this guy was the way he just stood there. In a word, he was motionless. I felt as if there was something off about that guy from the moment that I saw him. He gave me the creeps, and I didn't like the idea of passing him in the middle of that forest in the dark. I didn't want to go anywhere near him, but if I turned back and went the way I came, I would add another 30 minutes onto my walk. And I didn't want to do that. I remember physically trying to stop my hands from shaking. I was all tensed up. I felt for sure like he was about to do something as I passed him, but fortunately, he didn't. It was as if he didn't even realize I walked past him. I hadn't been out on my routine walks due to the terrible weather we had been having in the area in the following days. And of course, I didn't do my routine walk on the weekend, so I kind of forgot about it. I got back on the trail again, and to my shock, I ended up meeting the man stood by the side of the trail again, four days after our first encounter. He was stood there in the exact same spot I saw him in before. It was an unusually clear night. The moon was full, and it illuminated the forest trails well. Thanks to the moon being so bright that night, I was able to see that strange guy before I got anywhere near him so I was able to turn back and keep my footsteps quiet. I didn't really want to be anywhere near him. 
He was once again motionless, and he had this vacant look on his face. Why was he out there? Because of him, I quit that nightly routine that I had. I just didn't feel like going walking anymore. About two weeks go by, and I'm reading the newspaper in the office break room, and I get another shock. An article said that a body had been found in the forest, and the police believe that there had been a murder. I remembered that strange man, and I thought, no way. Could he be behind it? I did think that it could be likely, but overall, probably more unlikely than likely. I was so curious, though. I couldn't get it off my mind, so I decided one Sunday morning to head back to the trail. I found the area that the police had cordoned off. There was police tape and a detour set up. The place that was covered by white tarp and was hidden to the public was the very place I saw that man stood by the side of the trail. When I saw that, I got shivers and I turned back and went home. It might not be related at all, but another strange thing happened. I ended up with insomnia and I couldn't sleep for a while without taking sleeping pills. I think I must have had a close call that day, the day I passed that man. He might have been the culprit. Or was it that I passed by the victim wanting to be found? Or was it neither? I don't think I'll ever know. I'm a single woman and I live alone in the city and I work as a salesperson. Due to the nature of my job, I work what some would consider antisocial hours. I don't mind the hours to be honest, that's not why I'm here. I just want to share my experience. I usually stay up late on Sunday nights and sleep in on Monday mornings. I like having my working life like that in all honesty. There are a lot of people living in my building. A lot of them look like they're office workers and salespeople like me. I think that they work normal hours because Sunday nights are always pretty quiet. Well, it always used to be. But recently, I've been hearing noises. It seems like someone on my floor is wandering around at about 3am. I heard this strange scraping sound accompanying these heavy, dragging footsteps. I hear these noises coming from the communal hallway, which passes my apartment. I've been thinking of moving out, I can't lie. I don't know, maybe you'll agree with me that it's for the best by the time you hear the end of this. I think that the floor plan of each apartment in my building is the same as mine, so everyone should have their bathroom next to the entrance and then a small window at the front of each apartment in the toilet room. As you can imagine, I'm a night owl, so I would hear noises out there easily. I wondered if it was a newspaper delivery man making all that noise. I thought that because who else would be coming into the building that early to walk the communal corridors? But after I thought about it, I felt like newspapers around here got delivered a little later in the morning, not 3 a.m. It just didn't seem feasible. Maybe it was someone doing some early morning workouts, was my next thought. But the scraping sound and the long, slow footsteps, I don't know who's working out like that. Maybe it was kind of a rehabilitation training then. Someone might have had an accident and needed to get back to full mobilization and doing it in the hallway when no one else was around was the only way they could get their necessary exercise. It could be that, I thought to myself. I managed to convince myself that it was someone doing some kind of training. I still thought of it now and then, and I wondered why it had to be at 3am. 
so I had Mondays off at work, which was why I stayed up late on Sundays. Twice a month, I, twice a month, I didn't work on Thursday. But I didn't usually stay up so late on Thursdays, so I wondered if the same noises from upstairs. So I wondered if the same noises could be heard on Wednesday night. I stayed up one Wednesday night to try and find out, and lo and behold, I heard it again. What was strange about it was the manner of movement this time. It made me feel uncomfortable as my rehabilitation training theory now didn't make sense. Even though they sounded like they were dragging their feet, the speed was faster this time, strangely fast. It was like these little bursts of speed. I started to get scared. Did we have a prowler in our area? Was someone coming here periodically to scope out the place? I really didn't feel good when I heard those noises that night on my floor. I went to make sure my door was locked because I was feeling so nervous. The dragging and scraping footsteps went down the hall to the end of my floor. I knew that if they didn't come back up past my door, then they wouldn't be able to leave the building because the elevator and the stairs were the opposite end of where the footsteps were heading. The footsteps headed towards the deepest part of our floor, the apartment at the end of the hall. So I thought that that apartment must belong to this late night wanderer. It wasn't until later that night that something dawned on me. The apartment at the end of the hall was vacant. It had been vacant for some months now. No one lived there. No one lives there either to my knowledge. I couldn't get to sleep the night I realized that. I've been looking for a new place to live recently and I'll pretty much take any place I can get at this stage. I'll tell you why. The night before last, I heard those footsteps stop outside my door for a few seconds before heading down the hall. I've got to get out of here. This happened about 10 years ago. My husband and I were really into overnight trips up and down the country back then. We lived a carefree lifestyle and I miss those nights, but not the night I'm about to talk about. We usually drove back late at night after a trip. We liked it that way as the roads were clear and the night was cool and calm. Along the way, my husband and I both needed the bathroom so we decided to pull in to a roadside station. I think it was about 2 or 3 a.m. at that point. We were in Yamanashi Prefecture, famous of course for that forest, the Sea of Trees, Aokigahara. Yamanashi has a lot of nature. It's a beautiful place, but by night it feels wild. The roadside station we stopped at was close to the Misaka Pass. And there's a lot of nature in that area, very green. The pass itself is surrounded by a forest, and because it was the middle of the night, naturally the roadside station was closed. There wasn't much light in the area either. Hi, Jay here. I had a little look on Google for potential roadside stations near the Misaka Pass, and despite the author of this story not stating the location and actually going to great efforts to try and hide the location, I think this is the location. Here is a photo of it. Now imagine this at night time, and if I'm wrong, this is what a roadside station in Japan looks like. And yeah, they're pretty creepy at night. I've stopped at a few myself. And in this next picture, you can see the toilet area. Anyway, back to the story. We pulled into the quiet parking area, and my husband and I trotted off towards the bathrooms. There was a separate building located a little away from the stores that they had there for the bathrooms. There was light, but like I said before, it was a dim light. It made the building and the area look 
kind of gloomy. I could see some brighter light leaking out of the building, but for some reason that night I hesitated. I just suddenly did not want to go inside, and I don't know why I felt like that at the time, but I guess I do now. I didn't know when I would next get the chance to use the bathroom, and we were still a long way from home, so I didn't really have a choice. My husband walked off into the men's, and I headed into the ladies. It was very clean in there, and as I was gazing around, I noticed that the ceiling between the ladies and the men's was joined. Moreover, there was a gap allowing sound to travel. That actually gave me a sense of security, knowing that I was kind of connected to the space that my husband was in. I still didn't like being in there, though. That strange feeling of apprehension did not go away. The building had lots of glass in its design, and the roof was kind of cylindrical in a sense. It kind of looked like a mirror on its side. It's really hard to explain. The structure was a bit, I don't know, intimidating. I wanted to get in there and get out quickly. I just felt this weird energy about that place that night. All the doors to each store were open. I didn't need to see that to realize that I was the only one in the ladies there that night. I worked myself up, though. I couldn't calm myself down. I managed to make myself feel nervous. I could hear the sound of my breath growing heavier. I quickly got on with what I came in there to do and tried to keep my calm. My mind just seemed very good at making mountains out of molehills whilst I was in there. I was completely alone in the bathroom, and it was silent. The sound of the toilet flushing sounded so loud and somehow added to my rising anxiety levels. I quickly washed my hands and went outside to find my husband waiting out there for me. I ran over to him, and the first thing he said to me was, Oh, it's good that you weren't in there alone, huh? What? I asked him. Well, I only say that because you didn't want to go in there. You said you were scared, right? So I figured you might have felt a bit more at ease with someone in there with you. I tilted my head sideways. I didn't understand what he was saying. I was alone in the bathroom, wasn't I? And then my husband noticed that strange look on my face and said, What? You know what I mean? As soon as we went into the bathroom, you must have heard the click clacking of those high heels coming in behind you. You must have done. I mean, if I could hear it in the men's room, you must have heard it. I even heard her close the cubicle door. When my husband said that to me, my blood ran cold. As I've said many times before, I was the only one in the bathroom at that time. No one came in. I never heard any footsteps or a door closing like my husband said he heard. I was lost for words. My husband must have seen the confused and frightened look on my face because he stopped talking about the bathroom and said in a much more serious tone, let's get back in the car. He took me by the hand and led me back to the car without saying a word, and we got back on the road. We spent some time driving in silence, and then we started speaking again, but we didn't speak about that roadside station. After a few hours, we arrived home in one piece. My husband, looked up the roadside station online, and he found out at one time in the past, there had been offerings of flowers and dolls in the bathroom, as kind of a memento to commemorate something. It's unknown if they were left in there as a prank or, I don't know, some sicko's way to make people feel nervous. But it does make me wonder if I was truly alone in the bathroom that night. I don't know why my husband was able to hear what he heard and I wasn't. Maybe I'm not so sensitive to spirits, but I do remember those terrible feelings of nervousness and anxiety. Maybe those feelings were brought on by a presence in the bathroom with me, I don't know. We've never been back to that particular roadside station despite having the opportunity to do so.
When I was a little bit younger, I often went out after dinner, and I stayed out until it was really late. I loved playing catch with my friends. We were quite a sporty group back then. We loved playing catch, tossing the baseball back and forth. We found a secret access point into the schoolyard. It seems like some other kids had cut a hole in the wire mesh fence that surrounded the schoolyard, and when it was dark enough out not to be detected, we would slip through the hole and go play catch at school. You can play catch in the dark if you're focused enough. Plus the ball is coming at you at a high speed while your vision is impaired. It adds an element of danger and of course fun. But seriously, it's dangerous. Don't do it. But I can't lie. I did enjoy the thrill of it. The night that this happened was no different than any other night. We had snuck in and we were having a good time. After a while, one of us picked up on a noise that seemed a little unusual. I think it was me who noticed it first, actually. It sounded like there was a ball bouncing in another part of the schoolyard we didn't ever play in. We didn't ever play anywhere but the place near the hole in the fence, so we could leave if security or the cops came. And of course, we hadn't ever heard anyone else playing out here in the school grounds before. I looked in the direction I had heard the sound coming from and I saw what looked to me like the vague outline of another kid. This kid looked younger than me and my friends though, just based on stature. He was far away from us, so it was difficult to see him clearly, but that's what I felt like I saw. It was about 1am and we were playing in the high school kids' playground. We had never heard anyone coming or going and we were trying our best to listen out for stuff like that so we wouldn't get into trouble for trespassing. It was seriously weird how we hadn't heard that kid until that moment. My friends and I were kind of freaking out. So this kid was all alone in a place he shouldn't be in, and he had gotten in without any of us realizing. He was in a darker area too, where there was basically no streetlight. The reason we could see him was down to the light being behind us. The kid appeared to be playing catch by himself. He was picking up the ball and throwing it, and it would eventually bounce off a nearby tree and roll back to him. Then suddenly, the kid launched the ball in our direction. We watched as it slowly rolled into the light and down by our feet. We were creeped out. The kid didn't say a word, but his intention was clear. I felt like he wanted to play with us. Not knowing what to do or how to react quickly enough, we just stood there in silence, watching that kid. He made no attempt to come closer to us. He just stood in the dark, looking back at us, waiting. One of my friends broke the silence by saying, Let's go home, guys. So we agreed with him. It was weird, and we didn't want to be there anymore. Plus, what kid is playing alone at 1am? We thought we were crazy, being out as a group so late. We never ever expected any company. Not a solitary kid for company either. As we turned our backs on that kid to leave, we heard a rush of oncoming footfall behind us. It sounded like something was rushing at us from the darkness. I was so scared I started sprinting, and then my panicked friends joined me in sprinting. We all scrambled to get out of the hole in that mesh fence. After we escaped, we didn't really ever mess around at the school after hours again, it just didn't feel right. Later one of my friends said that when we were all rushing to get out of the school, he dropped his catcher's mitt. He said he saw it the next day, on top of a tree branch. The same tree the kid was throwing the ball at. It was a scary night indeed. My friends think it was a spirit that we encountered that night. Some lonely soul who maybe was bullied in life and now was seeking friendship in death. If that's the case, then that makes me feel sad. Sad that we ran. However, now that I'm older and a lot more cynical, I wonder if it was an adult. And because he was so far away and we were at school, we just thought it was a kid. If option two is true, then it's a little more sinister. 
with what he did with that ball. Maybe he was trying to entice us into coming out of the light and into the dark by offering to play with us. I don't know though. All I know it's a memory. That is a pretty spooky one. My hometown is in Iwanai, Hokkaido, which is about a two hours drive from Sapporo. There is a river along the coast called the Nodzuka River, which is where my experience took place. The area I grew up in isn't exactly bustling with life and activity. It's basically full of fishermen, their homes and seafood processing plants. I had a good bunch of friends at the time and we always found ways to have fun. We had a band and we used to have this practice room which was loaned to us by the bassist's auntie. No one used it at night and it wasn't close enough to any houses for anyone to complain about the noise. It was actually part of one of those processing plants I mentioned, so it wasn't the easiest to access but it was perfect for us. Well the smell wasn't great, but we didn't care. So this happened on a night where us four friends and band members got together for band practice. We had been playing a few songs and having a good time. At one point the practice room was getting so hot I decided to go and get something to drink. It turned out that everyone else wanted something to drink so we did rock paper scissors for who would have to go and get the drinks. I ended up losing and so did my friend who played the drums who we will call D. So off we went to go and get drinks. There was a small store near the Nodzuka River, but it closed at about 8pm, and it was well beyond 8pm. I think it was about midnight. We usually hung out there until quite late. We were all in our late teens, and being in the band was a whole lot of fun. Even though the store was shut, we knew that there were vending machines right outside of it. So that's where we decided to go. In order to get to those vending machines, we had to cross the bridge over the Nodzuka River. And for some reason, as we were going over the bridge, I decided to take a look underneath it. I saw someone under there. I didn't really expect to see anyone down there that late, but then I thought it could be someone just doing a spot of night fishing or something. We bought our drinks from the vending machine and turned back to cross the bridge. One of those late night long distance driving trucks happened to go over the bridge at the same time we did, and its headlights illuminated the area. I could see the man under the bridge a lot more clearly. He didn't look like he was fishing to me. He seemed like he was digging a hole. As a prank, me and Dee threw some stones in the water near him to scare him. You know, just to see his reaction. I don't know why, we were just being stupid. He went nuts, he started shouting at us. So we ran back to join our friends in the practice room. He was saying all these threats, and we told them all about it. Yeah, they didn't seem that interested though. A few days went by, and we were practicing again at the processing plant. We were there almost every day. During the day we saw a bit of a commotion going on down by the river. We were a countryside community. So when people gather and clamor like that, you gotta think, oh man, has there been a fire or something? It was cause for concern, is what I mean. So we went over to the people gathered by the bridge, and I asked an older lady who was looking over the railings about what was going on, and she said to me that a body had been discovered, buried under the bridge. I looked at my friend D, and then to my other bandmates, and even though none of us said a word, it was like we all understood at the same time. What me and D had seen that night 
when we went to go get the drinks was probably the killer burying the body. We made sure that we reported what we saw to the police. I don't think they needed much assistance though because we saw a news report the following day. They had caught the guy and he had confessed. The news report went something like this. According to the statement of suspect Nomura Kano Nachi, I vaguely remember the name, sorry some part of his name might be wrong, but I remember hearing Nachi, who was under investigation for the murder of a woman after killing her in Sapporo. He put her body in a trunk and drove to Iwanai. He stated that he buried the body on the riverbank. Hokkaido police searched the Nozuka River, as per the statement, and a body was recovered. The suspect was rearrested under suspicion of murder and the abandonment of a corpse. After that, we didn't like to stay out too late by that river, or even in the band practice spot. We preferred to hang out in areas where there were more people. You know, like shopping malls. After a while, three of us got jobs in Sapporo, whereas D stayed in Iwanai and got a job locally. We're still in touch and it seems like the bridge has become some kind of tourist spot. He says people turn up there ghost hunting and to test their courage. Don't want to go back to that bridge if I'm being honest. And I pray for the soul of that woman who was buried there. It was a traumatic event, and one I don't think I'll forget. 